Eric Rivera, AKA Watch Eric, is actually our producer's cousin. Most people know me as Watch Eric, and I am a high-end luxury watch dealer. Three things I love about this watch. So it's Tuesday morning, and I'm here at Ocean's Edge Resort in Key West. And you're probably wondering, what am I doing here? Well, I was invited by the guys from Local Knowledge, which is a fishing show starring Rush Maltz. So how you boys feel about a little permit fishing this afternoon? And Ali Husseini. Dude, that was awesome. Now, if you don't know, I'm an avid angler. Come fishing a lot with my dad and my uncle. But mostly, I've been fly fishing lately. It's been quite some time since I've been out there doing some deep water fishing, and I look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Eric found them for you. Come on, Eric. Third time's the charm, buddy. Oh, dang, nice one. Now the part is just landing them. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in just the world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz, Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. When I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tuna. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. Wow. Woo. Woo. That's the one. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. People ask me all the time, where's your favorite place to fish? After traveling the world, hands down, bar none, Key West is my favorite place to fish. You know, one of the best things about fishing Key West is always options. There's always something to catch in Key West. And when I say that, I'm not talking about like a, a non-glamorous fish. I don't know how you'd say it, but there's always something to catch in Key West, a good fish because of those options, you know? And the, the option that we've been using a lot lately is the option to go in the Gulf. So you got a buoy or you just got a like- I got a little water bottle on it. Got it, it's right up ahead, no? Yeah, I see. and then I got another one here too somewhere. And we do it for a couple of reasons. Sometimes the fishing is just on fire up there. And then the other reason is weather. We catch a few. You know, I got Eric and Ollie coming to town and you know, I've been watching the weather all week. That one day it looks like it's gonna be beautiful. The next day you can see there's some kind of weather coming in. Generally what that means is we're gonna have some rain, some storms. If it's windy on the Atlantic side, a lot of times you get the right conditions in the Gulf. And you know, on this trip, Rush said we were fishing the Gulf. I knew exactly what that meant and I was ready to go. How you boys feel about a little permit fishing this afternoon? Down for whatever, whatever you want to do. Let's do it. I mean, we Actually, got- I'm looking forward to that. Eric, you're just happy to be out on the water, huh? Absolutely, I've been patiently yeah. waiting, you know? Out of that concrete jungle? Oh yeah, absolutely. The permit fishery, the way Rush does it, I absolutely love. When I think of permit fishing, especially growing up, I always thought of a guy pulling you around on the flats and you're gonna cast a fly to him and all that. Not my bag at all. I know guys love it, that's awesome. We got a wreck right here. And I'm gonna try and set up with the wind and with the tide. But I really enjoy the permit fishery here because a lot of times it's sight fishing. And it's sight fishing that requires a well-placed cast. And then the other part of it is knowing when you're bit. It's all in that tick. When they buy, when you feel that tick, you've got like two or three seconds to set them up. You get a guy that doesn't know how to fish. He has a very little chance of catching one of these fish. It's I think so it's been, fun. 15 years since I caught a permit on a rod here. Really? I'm sure. Really? Yeah, last time I was in the Tortugas, the whole school pulled up out of nowhere. The way this trip all came together was me and Ali were walking around the Miami Boat Show and we just happened to run into Eric. Eric Rivera, AKA Watch Eric, is actually our producer's cousin. And I've been following him on YouTube and on Instagram for a long time now. Ain't no surprise, ain't no surprise. My name is Eric Rivera. Most people know me as Watch Eric, and I am a high-end luxury watch dealer. I buy, sell, and trade for a living. Most people are gonna see me in over 400 videos I've done in the past 
six, seven years through YouTube. I didn't like the double stick indicators. You could be pushing the buttons and trying to actuate the chrono of the baguettes. A lot of it has to do also with the setting, the way that they kind of invisible. Well, I've always been fascinated with watches. I don't know why since I was a little kid. I think my first watch that really got my attention was, I mean, it's cheap, but at that time it was probably a lot of money. It was like a $35 Mickey Mouse watch. Since watches are such good investments, if you buy them right and you buy the right brands, it almost becomes like a way to, you know, an asset, just how to like store money. It's a really cool game. It's really fascinating. It's like one of those things where you're like, man, I could see myself doing that. Let me know, ready? Yeah, go, go ahead. Go drop, there's another mark. That looks like a school. Yeah. I got the motor in reverse, so just keep that in mind, boys. There you go. What took so long, Captain There Rose? you go. Woo! That was All sick. All right, Eric. Dude, that was awesome. That's... <laughs> That's the thing about the Florida Keys. Roll out at noon, catch a badass fish. I mean, it's just so crazy to me. Now the part is just landing them. Yeah, I think it might be a little heavy on this drag, too. I think for a lot of Rush's prime season, which is like December to March, he's offshore. He's out front in the Atlantic. He's chasing mahis. He's chasing sailfish. They are so strong. Like a big yellowtail, man. Maybe he's bigger than I thought. Uh, they're usually big out in, the, in these parts. There yeah. you go, Eric. Doubled up. There. Doubled up. Nice. Remember, let him run. Let him do his thing. But you can kind of tell, this time of year, Rutchie gets excited. He wants to go up in the Gulf. He loves running 50, 60, 70 miles to primarily wrecks, but sometimes rock piles as well that just don't get a lot of pressure. Doubled up on perms. Lean way out. There you go, over the top. He is sitting in the motors, Rush. Mm-hmm. He knows the program. Oh! Pull the hook. I'm not it's sure. Up. And it's really, it's an awesome option to be able to go up there and fish some stuff that just hasn't been beat up like the closer spots. Nice! Look at that. Dude. Nice way to start your trip, huh? I mean, first bait, first cast. I expect a little more out of you, but that's cool. That's awesome. I guess that was them on the meter. That was them. No mistake in it, right? They're so cool, man. You can talk about it all you want until you put one in the boat. That's great. All right, what do you say we let this boy go? Heck yeah. Go get another one? We got to get Eric one. That one got the best of you. Nah. Come on. I mean, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't have had a good time had I not been on such a nice boat, because I think if you got the right people on board, you can have a good time on any boat. But I cannot deny that being on that 37-foot CVZ was amazing but the one major thing that i feel was the game changer was the sea keeper it's such a noticeable difference that for me that's one of the factors that completely changed the whole experience there you go eric found them for you thanks eric double i was pretty excited about having eric on the boat eric's just great to be around funny loves the water and he's got stories for days so you're straight up and down. You can either go forward or way around the motors, whichever. Go walk as fast as you can around the motors. Watch that net on the floor up there. I'm going underneath the boat. So is Eric. So you guys I'm got to. I'm back now. He's turning. OK, you're good. The other reason is I enjoy taking somebody new out on the boat for the first time. Duplicity. First of all, I love to see the reactions. I love to see people get excited about the fishing. Oh, don't get in Eric. He's right here. I'm rubbing on him. Ah! Even after doing it for all these years, yep. I still have that little bit of a chip on my shoulder. I still got a little bit of something to prove. Give me a little line there. There you go. Let's confirm. Oh, nice. my glasses. <laughs> two Another, for two. Two for two, you're hot. I'll take it. Eric, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna change that now. Yep. All right, let's let, let's let this one go and get Eric on. Let him go. Let's go, Eric. All right, buddy, here you go. Generally, when I'm permit fishing, I'm up in the tower. I'm sight fishing for him. We're looking for that big gold sheen in the water, and we're throwing crabs in the middle of the sheen and all that. Today was a lot different. That weather came through. We still had a lot of cloud, and the water was extremely churned up from that blow the night before. Try right there, guys. Now we're kind of right up on the wreck, so... 
all's not lost. We have this electronic suite sitting in the boat and we're gonna rely heavily on our electronics. Nice, nice work, Eric. So they'll only eat I'm live crab. I'm gonna chase down a little bit, Eric. All right. Just to give, give you a little bit. Come on, Eric. Third time's the charm, buddy. When's the last time you caught a permit in the Keys? <sighs> Over 15 years. What brought you down to the Keys as a young man? Your parents? Oh, I love the Keys. Come fishing a lot with my dad and my uncle. My dad and my uncle have both been like obsessive fishermen since they're kids. I remember my, my mom says that she had a, a big fight with my dad when I was a baby because he wanted to take me out on the boat and she said that I couldn't go out on the boat till I turned three. Oh, yeah, when he starts to dig like that, just give it to him a little bit. Yeah, just let him do his thing. You got him this far. You don't gotta worry about the wreck right now, we're good. So, I mean, I've been in a boat fishing with my dad or my uncle since I was a little kid. Slide, oh, dang, nice one. Slide up just a little bit for me, buddy. I was raised in a house that had a big lake in the neighborhood with full of big peacock bass and stuff like that. So I would fish constantly. It's just fun. I've always been attracted to it. All right, let it release the pressure just a little bit. Let me kind of work them right here. I think fishing is something that a very large percentage of the world just likes it or finds attraction to it. You know, everybody likes that feeling when the line hits and you know you got a fish on. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, Eric. Size matters, all right? Size does matter. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, definitely. Good does. job. Jesus, fights exactly like a jack. Oh, yeah. It's like incredible how, how much a fish this size, which is still big but not huge, pulls so much. 15 years, it's almost like your first one again. Oh, yeah. Whew. That is a healthy fish right there. Absolutely. I can healthy feel fish. it. I can feel it because I'm the one that's tired now. Look tired. <laughs> You ready for another one on spin then? Absolutely. So the fishing in the Gulf was really cool because I've never fished offshore like that in the Gulf. How's that one feel? It's actually being a little bit kinder. Yeah, is that beating you up so bad? Oh no. Today was just one of those days, you know, every once in a while you just get a break and we didn't get a break with the weather, but we did get a break with the fishing. We grabbed a break. <laughs> Perfect size right there. Oh yeah, yeah, not too much to wear you out, but. Perfect, Perfect size. All right, we're gonna release her. Let her go. Now, I think it was really cool for Eric to see the other side of the world too, and that, you know, he's got plenty of permit, but it's usually in a very different environment. Oh, he's on top. He's on top right there. Was it on the bow? Yeah, yeah, he's on the surface. Oh, okay, I see him. In the back country, in the mangroves, being pulled around, and then now he's kind of stepped into our way of catching him, and it's, you know, I think arguably just as fun, probably honestly easier to catch them. You're gonna have a lot more action. I think you really dug it. Boom. <laughs> Is that number three? I lost count, my friend. Wow. I quit counting. See what else we can find the next couple days. Ooh, he wanted to go back. <laughs> I've been obsessed with fly fishing since probably my early teens, 12, 13, around there, because I was watching Jose Weheb and the Spanish Fly on TV, you know, Saturday, Sunday morning. Sometimes you do things for a long time and then you kind of stop a little bit. So I had like a hiatus of fly fishing for probably 10 years, which is pretty long. And I still had all my gear there and everything. So I spent a long time without doing that. I think one of the major things that got me right back to fly fishing was I went on a trip to Montana where I was going to Yellowstone and I made it a point that I wanted to fly fish on a stream one day, you know, or the, that's really what got me back into it. I said, why have I not been doing this? I almost felt like I wasted years that I could have done that and I didn't. Yeah, we had a sort of a mission with bringing Eric on, you know, he loves fly fishing. It's all he talks about, you know, his tarpon and all that stuff. So we told him, bring his gear. Let's see what we can do. So what I'm doing now, Eric, is just kind of drifting over this wreck, kind of seeing how the boat's going to lay. That way I could figure out where to throw the anchor and how we're going to sit. I'm going to put a little chum out, let that work for a little bit and just kind of build some life around the area. Flick a couple pilchards out there, see what starts coming to the surface, and we'll go from there. One of the coolest things about fishing in the Gulf is the amount of life and also how that life responds. I feel like when we go out to the West, 
and we put the anchor down, we put the chum bag in. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff can come up. A lot of cool stuff will rise to the boat. The water definitely cleared up. It's not the blue, blue water I really want to see for the tunas, but. But in the Gulf, I kind of feel like those fish are hungrier for lack of a better word. There's not a lot of structure. I'm thinking the food is going to be very competitive. And when you put that anchor down and you get that chum bag going, a lot of times it turns into an aquarium behind the boat. There's a big bonita right there. Found one. Oh, now it just erupted. I'll look for the black one. You want to catch a uh, bonita? They're big out here. There's it's, a tuna right there. You see a tuna? Yep. Just swam by black. Well, let me see. Right oh here. my God! Look at the size of that bull. Woo! Is that, a, is that a bull or a tiger? I think that was a tiger. I don't know. It came out from under the boat while I was leaning over grabbing that line. I might have been a tiger. I just made a little poopy, Captain Ross. And doesn't matter how many times you've seen it, we're back there looking in the water. Oh my gosh, there's a mangrove snapper. Oh, we're just getting excited like kids at an aquarium. And that sets up perfectly for trying to catch a fish on the fly. The greatest thing about Key West and fly fishing offshore is you get lots of bites. See if I can get them in before the tax man gets them. Let's see. I like that shirt. Looks good on you. <laughs> you know, Eric coming off the flat, big thing for him is fly fishing. He really enjoys using his fly rod. He's got this fancy Gucci fly rod. He didn't even want to bust it out because he didn't want it like rubbing up against my T-top until it was time to be used. Uh, it's all rad when you're just sitting here, you know what I mean? Catching fish at will. You know, I get a kick out of all that stuff, you know. Uh, I don't want my, my rod to be touching the T-top. Okay, Eric, you got it. All right, keep your eyes on that cuda for me. I don't see him right now. Ah, oh, it's not good. <laughs> Pretty heavy. There you go, break the ice. Yeah. Not the target species, yeah. but it's going to warm you we'll up. We'll take it right now to get started, absolutely. Get, get wow. the blood pumping, huh? Oh, yeah. You know, I always get a lot of grief. Oh, you don't fly fish. Oh, well, no, I do fly fish. I've been fly fishing since I started guiding. Oh, oh those jacks are getting big, Raj. Boom, right there. I just don't stand on the bow of a boat and get pulled around and chase tarpon and bonefish. It's just, I'm not on my day off looking to get guided. There we go. How was your backhaul rolling? Cast it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. For somebody who's picked up a fly rod in a long time, I ran out of words for. When do you think was the last time? Too. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> a couple years. This was one of Jose's rods. That's awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah. It is fun. I gotta admit. I might actually try it. Different. You know, watching these guys, Rush and Eric, fish with the fly rod, I'm like, hey, that seems pretty cool. And then Rush hooked like a 35 pound jack on it. I'm like, hey, that does not seem cool. Is the amberjack a strong fish, Captain Russ? <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> it was straight pain. This is why people break so many fly rods right here. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you got them right where you want them. I had them. <laughs> I had them right where I wanted them. I don't like seeing that fly line go back off the reel. You know my man's a big boy, he's strong, he can fish. I don't know how many times that fish took him around the boat and it was instantly one of those decisions that you regret and you could see it on his face. There we go. Oh, oh so with that Cuda. Uh, excuse me sir, take a step back please. Lay oh. up. Oh my God. <laughs> A, a, a double a double hand? Oh. <laughs> that was a bad decision. Look at the size of Woo. that thing. All right, you boys are up. Wow. <laughs> That's my share of fly fishing for the day. <laughs> wow. Anybody, you're more than welcome to use my rod. I'm good, actually. I'm going to catch a yellowtail. <laughs> You know, that fishing in an aquarium thing is really cool for the fly guy because he can actually see that fish. All right, buddy, how about we let you go? Target it and present the fly to it. Just like if I was lure fishing, right? And I see a fish coming that I want to catch, I'm going to try to put that lure five feet in front of him. That one got it. That one got it. Boom. Now he knows. Now he knows his hook. Feel like you got the steel in that one? <laughs> oh, get him, Eric. How's that rod feel? 
Got a lot of backbone, man, you actually. Got a lot of backbone? I mean, you're gonna have to let me blow that thing up one time. <laughs> <laughs> you still got warranty with that or what? Not a problem. Not a problem? Fly fishing has its own set of challenges. You're not using a reel with a really fast retreat. You're not using a big stiff rod to catch this fish. You are using a lighter rod with a one-to-one -one gear ratio. I mean, I, fi I figure if I broke that rod, it would be about even for the amount of flies you've gone through. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. I mean, or a Rolex, one or the other. <laughs> That's why I brought the Submariner, man. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Out of all the options, I said, what am I going to wear? I said, well, the Sub is for this. I can beat it up. It can handle whatever it is. How did you get into that business? I kind of fell into it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it just happened. Pull out a little line for me there, buddy. Gotcha. So you just kind of fell into it, huh? Yeah, I was buying and trading so much for myself and all my friends that just took off from there. Ooh. There you go. I that mean, was actually the perfect size. We don't got to impress nobody with the big one and hire me out. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're going to have to get you a bigger one since that's the first time yeah. you've used that rod. Right, now we know it works. This is just another case of us kind of taking a stab at something with Eric, hoping it works out really well, and it worked out awesome. Watch it. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Now we're talking about that hurt. Nah. Still got your watch? <laughs> or is that Jack <laughs> now? <Yeah. laughs> oh, what he let go, he swam up. Nah. I had a great time with him. We had dinner together a couple of nights. Got to pick the guy's brain about his world, which I, you know, I love business. It's really interesting to me how he makes a living, the characters he runs into. And the guy's got some stories. No shortage of stories. Man, I should have given a break in between. Now we get to watch you sweat, Eric. Ah! You know, I can't remember the last time that I took off four days of work to go fishing. I deeply regret not taking a break in between. Life's full of regrets. Here I got the luxury of fishing all day, then coming back here to the resort, nice rooms, take a shower, go eat at the restaurants. It's gonna be a minute. Oh, it's gonna be more than, it's gonna be a couple minutes. No, that it's, sounds means he's almost finished, Eric. You're doing good. It's gonna be a couple minutes. To make the decision to come down here really mellowed me out all week, and it's something that I probably should do more often. I'll tell you what, it'd be a lot better if he was running out instead of down. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you're, now you're going West Coast style. <laughs> oh my God. Eric's welcome back anytime. I've already invited him to San Diego. I'm glad we took the time to kind of get to know each other and, you know, made a friend for life. Now it comes up and it's a five pound. <laughs> Ray, ready? Yeah, we're ready. I'm oh, like, you got a foul hook. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, nice hook placement. Way different than the last one, I mean. I would say that I'm done with catching these for right now for at least another half hour. I need a good uh, drink. A little bre break? Yeah, a little water, break, a little, little drink. Rain. Yeah. Oh, a little relaxation of the muscles for a minute there. I mean, this one really fought for a while. Whew. We're both tired, buddy. Don't worry about it. You want to check out Eric and see what he does? Check him out on either Instagram or YouTube. Look up Watch Eric. You can find him. He's got hundreds of thousands of followers and his content's really good. Even if you're not in the market for a killer watch, just kind of checking out how the other side of the world lives is really fun.